Good morning. It is uh, Monday, December 7th, 2020. So today I'm going to uh, lift up another one of those commemorations that comes up on the calendar um, that I think are interesting and has given us an opportunity to reflect on some of these in a way that we uh, didn't have before. And today's is St. Ambrose. Um, and I'm going to read to you just a little bit of, of what's written about uh, him. In 374, the death of the Bishop of Milan left the local church bitterly divided. With violent tempers threatening to erupt, Ambrose, the provincial governor, went to the basilica and exhorted the assembly to find a peaceful solution. Suddenly a voice rose up, Ambrose for Bishop. The cry was quickly taken up by the entire assembly. Ambrose was horrified. Not only was he a lay person, he was not baptized. Nevertheless, he acquiesced. Within one week, he was baptized, confirmed, ordained, and consecrated as Bishop of Milan. Wow. <laughs> Despite his lack of preparation, Ambrose made up for lost time. He gave away all his property, adopted an austere and strenuous habit of prayer, and immersed himself in the study of scripture and theology. He became the protector of the poor and oversaw the preparation of catechumens and the training of clergy. He was responsible for innumerable conversions, most famously that of St. Augustine, whom he personally instructed and baptized. So, in the life of the church, in the early life of the church, there is not a lot of stories like this, but the stories are not totally unfamiliar of lay persons being appointed to positions of church leadership. Um, Ambrose picked for his ability to help lead the people. A little bit more about Ambrose. Though Ambrose wrote many books, he is best remembered for his leadership of the church in a tumultuous area or era. The Arian heresy, which denied the full divinity of Christ, had divided the church into rival factions. When the emperor tried to impose civic harmony by ordering Ambrose to cede or get rid of one of his churches for use by the Arians, Ambrose refused. The emperor is in the church, he said, not over it. The emperor backed down. <laughs> that is a powerful word that Ambrose reminds us of. Ambrose was also known as a hymn writer. Um, and we actually have three hymns in our hymnal that were written by Ambrose. One is an Advent hymn, Savior of the Nations Come, hymn number 263. I want to read to you a few of the words. Savior of the Nations Come, Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, God has chosen such a birth. Not by human flesh and blood, but by the mystic breath of God, was the word of God made flesh, fruit of woman, bosom, blossom, fresh. Wondrous birth, O wondrous child, from his throne a virgin mild, very God and Mary's son, eager now his race to run. From God's heart, the Savior speeds. Back to God, his pathway leads. Out to vanquish death's command. Back to reign at God's right hand. Those words remind us of the importance of this season of preparation for Christ's coming among us. For Christ's speeds feeding and humbling himself to be like us, to be for us, to save us, to redeem us, and then to sit again at the right hand of God from where we wait for him to come again. I want to uh, pray as a prayer another one of Ambrose's hymns, hymn number 559. I'm going to use the words as a prayer. Let us pray. 
O splendor of God's glory bright, O living spring of light from light, come, very sun of truth, and love come with your radiance from above. Teach us to love with all our might, drive envy out, remove all spite, turn to the good each troubling care, and give us your grace, your name to bear. As dawn speeds on across the sky, true dawn with haste come from on high, a word through whom light came to be, come in your power and set us free. All glory be to God most high, to God the Son, let praises rise. The Spirit blessed, let us adore forever and forevermore. Amen. God bless. See you next time.